Hello and welcome to Chateau Dreams. This is our family story of our move to the south of France to a 53-room castle during COVID lockdown with two small children and all of our animals. Now we're here, we will show you some renovation, go on some adventures, and in addition to that, we'll also try and pick up some French culture in this beautiful region and also have a lot of fun with our volunteers. Thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe. Hello everybody and welcome to this week's episode of Chateau Dreams. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to feel rather festive. First of all, apologies, I came up with the most hideous lurgy this week, probably as a result of last week's adventures. In the pouring rain and have developed pleurisy, so this makes my voice sound a little bit strange and I have to speak in short bursts. Otherwise, I get a coughing fit, which would not be the most delightful for you guys. I'm on the mend, but wanted to apologise for any bizarre sound quality. And Silver's been giving me tips on laying low for a while. Thanks, Silver. Ross has had a brilliant week. He predicted a number of winners over the weekend. And in addition to that, on Monday, he picked three winners in racing from only three races. So my goodness, let's hope this winning streak continues. He's just got back from training abroad and in less than 24 hours, I'm afraid to say I've had the poor man shifting logs and all sorts of other things as you'll see later. I can't believe it's the 1st of December tomorrow. This time last year, we still had masks on here in France. Can you imagine? We'd also had the sad news that my parents couldn't visit due to COVID. So this year, I am thrilled to announce that they are arriving on the 20th of December. Hooray! This has got me reminiscing about this time last year. This time last year, we had 32 rolls of insulation delivered. This Ross hoiked up to the fifth floor. And I then laid them out. So we're now very well equipped with, oh goodness, I think it's about 30 centimetres worth of lovely insulation, which I think should keep us toasty warm this year. It made a big difference last year, but the core temperature of the chateau had actually dropped because we'd had no insulation. And um, this year that hasn't been the case because with the warm weather, plus the fact that the insulation's already in, I think it's really going to help us out. So thank goodness for that. A couple of other things that made a difference last year was the massive new stove that was put into the winter salon by Nikolai and Jean-Louis. You can see a photograph of it here. This pumps out at the bare minimum a massive 15 kilowatts of heat. It keeps us all lovely and toasty warm. In winter, the castle gets through about a thousand litres of fuel every two weeks. So this is also terrible for the environment and also doesn't get us up to more than about 15 degrees. By the way, that's for seven hours of usage and the weekends, obviously, when the children are here. So the fires here are not just pretty, they are absolutely essential. And get us to within the recommended guidelines for health for children and older family members, which of course is extremely important. If you add a pair of thermals to that, well, you're quite toasty. We've also added ambient temperature thermostats to 26 of the radiators in the castle and sealed up as many of the drafts we can. But there's a lot more work to do. In the meantime, it's healthy, and that's the most important thing. Incidentally, the little house has none of these problems. It's always toasty warm, with its modern insulation and double glazing everywhere. But hey, these are the perks of living in a castle. However, medieval living does not have the most enormous amount of glamour, so being warm is absolutely essential. Gosh, we also have boiling hot water as well in our bedrooms this year. The hot water used to come from the boiler system, which is down in the garden rooms. It's enormous. I'll show you it one day. But anyway, I it got up and it cooled down quite considerably, which was pretty miserable, to be honest. I know it's a sort of 21st century problem. But anyway, it did make a big difference when it was freezing anyway in the castle. So this year we've got toasty warm showers from the very beginning of winter. Oh, thank goodness. In terms of heating the castle, we hope to be carbon neutral very soon. And next time, I'll outline some of our plans on how we plan to do that. Where the budgeting is going to come from, we're not quite sure, but the plans are there. Wherever you are, we hope you're very well and having a great week so far. 
course, the good news is at this time of year, even though it's wet and a little bit miserable, there are no snakes. Well, at least they're hiding. I don't know about you, but seeing a two metre snake flinging itself along the drive is never one of my favourite moments, even though I am a zoologist and I do like all animals. It's just a little bit much for me. Show you where the new vineyard is going in. Now, it doesn't look like there's going to be a new vineyard going in because it's all massively overgrown, but it is an absolutely brilliant space um, because it gets a lot of water because the neighbouring farmer actually waters this space when he's doing his crops. So that'll be really helpful in the summer because, as you know, it gets very hot and will guarantee the vines really good, a really good proper supply of water. If you haven't yet seen the Chateau Tour of the winery, the castle is a domain and was very well known for the production of Armagnac and wine. We'd like to utilise this equipment again for castle production. My parents have very kindly offered to pop this in for us and we're going to work all together on getting it set up and in and get those buildings to good use and produce some lovely wine and hopefully in the future some Armagnac for family and friends. And, well, who knows, with the status of the land in future, my goodness, anything could happen, couldn't it? In great news, I met with one of the former family owners of the castle yesterday and they told me that the whole of the space when they bought it was used for production. So this is great as it means there's no one specific place to plant the vines. It's all good. Uh, but it doesn't need a lot of clearing. But with all the goats, we're quite good at that these days. So let me just show you where it is. Well, it's very close to the old winery, which seems somewhat appropriate. And then as we come round, Look, you see what I mean about the brambles. So I think it's probably about 15 metres in width. And then this goes all the way down. And it's probably about 400 metres. But we're not going to use all of that. We're just going to use a little bit to start off with. It, it does get a lot of light, this area. And it's also south facing as well. So the goats are already in here doing a little bit of organising and clearing and tidying, which is great. And then we'll rotivate the soil and start to put some vines in next year, I guess. Some of the goats valiantly doing their job. Uh, anyone who knows anything about goats knows that they eat absolutely everything. So they do need to be penned in. Otherwise, the same wonderful creatures that will help clearing all of your brambles and everything else will also help clear all of your roses or any ornamental plants they can get their little hooves on. So they're very sweet. So Zaza, goat in boots and Elsa are making a good job on this. They'll be in this part of the enclosure um, probably overnight and then tomorrow we will move it around for them to make sure that they've got some new places to go and some more food to eat. So it will be a good space but very much a work in progress. <laughs> We adore our Basset Hounds, Blue and Ella. Cuddly, scrumptious, adorable, with a nose second only to the Bloodhound, they are super cute. They are also massively, massively destructive and can clear a room of any scrumptious food within about three seconds. Something has to be done. Oh my goodness, the Bassets have struck again. Look what they've done to the breakfast room. It seems at least they haven't discovered a taste for freshly ground coffee. But anyway, <coughs> Uh, Olivia and I have come up with a plan to deal with those pesky pups. Breakfast room. Yeah, so I'm trying to create a bit of order, um, putting sort of the pots and pans away in, and there's like these labels as well, so you kind of want to follow those. Um, and then my next task is kind of, again, to kind of clear all this stuff, but then to clear the top as well. So hopefully, yeah. The reason why Olivia is indoors, everybody, as well as outdoors, is because the weather is oh. banging! <laughs> Yeah, although it's not, it's not English weather or Welsh weather quite. No, so. so we're looking for some, we're spending some time indoors, aren't we? And we're spending some time... Bit of both. Bit of both. Bit of both. Mix it up a bit. Look at this, this is so cool. <gasps> yeah. Well, we'll come back, guys, and show you what it's like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, did, I can't remember the name of that Japanese lady that, that's really good at organising. Oh, I don't know. She has her Netflix channel. I don't know. Um, oh, thank you. Think... 
About four hours later, we're nearly there. Everything's been emptied out, everything working's been put back in, and all food has been removed. We've still got to do a dump run and clear the tops, but it is at least basset proof. Now, where on earth are we going to store all the tins and all the food and cereals? Let's see what we do next. We are attempting to chop the top off this um, nice, well, shall we use the pantry? And Olivia is sorry. And she has a special swear word, <laughs> which is polite and we can use on camera. If it's you actually, feel angry. <laughs> what is your special swear word? Um, Penelope. Right. For reasons only known to Olivia. Anyway, there we are. Oh, that's good. Look, look. What about a bit of backwards forwards action? Okay. There you go. Oh, yes! Yes! Yeah, the angle. There we go. Yes! <laughs> she How amazing that. We've only got four to go, so I will stop <laughs> the video now four. and we'll do the rest. All right. So the shelving worked and here's the Bassett Proof Pantry. All non-perishable food items now live in here and they are safe. Hooray! The next area to Bassett Proof is the stable yard, but I think, frankly, that's certainly for another day. So we had the first of our winter log deliveries today. Two cubic metres, which is absolutely fantastic. And Ross, as you can see, is busy doing the logs. I did do some of them, I promise. It didn't take too long, actually, to get them all done. There's lots more to come up in our next episode, but I think that's probably enough for this week. Thanks very much for watching, and we look forward to seeing you very, very soon. How fabulous I walk away, and it's all been done. Brilliant. Thanks, Ross. And thanks, Olivia, for all your help too this week.